Welcome to the Inspiring Click Leaders podcast with me, Dave Roberts. This week, I have the pleasure to be talking with Sue Parker, the founder of Empowered Leaders in Tech and podcast host. Sue has a degree in business with information, communication, technology, and education from Manchester Metropolitan University, and also a Master of Science degree in business intelligence systems and data mining from De Montfort University. Sue has a passion for helping ambitious professionals to become empowered leaders. I've previously worked with Sue and have experienced firsthand the level of energy and focus that she brings to any project or initiative. What a pleasure it is to have you with us here today, Sue. Thank you, Dave. It's great to be here and invited on your podcast, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. I find it really inspiring listening to these incredible stories. Well, thank you very much. So obviously we've worked together, but where did it all begin for you? You know, how did you choose to pursue a career in technology? Yeah, sure. So um, I was probably quite lucky, unlike some of your guests, where I I did IT at school and I actually figured out quite early on that I was a bit of an IT whiz. So it was my my only A star when I came out of GCSEs was in IT. Um, but then I kind of had an uncertain start. I didn't really know what to do next. So I fumbled my way into finance, working at Barclays Bank for a while before realizing that I really wanted to do something a bit more that I could get my teeth stuck into. And I went back to university to train to be a teacher. And it was a pretty much a given. It was going to be IT and business studies all the way. And I really enjoyed that for about eight years. I led myself up to be a course coordinator and really enjoyed working with the students and and learning some new technical skills um, in web development and various other things while I was doing that role. But one thing that really stuck out to me is that I was advising these students going into university and I hadn't been in private sector. And I really had this like burning desire inside of me to figure out what's it like to do all these jobs that I'm helping them to go to university and train to do and become. So I had to get into the private sector. And the first natural step was because I taught so much web development was to become a web developer myself. So starting right at the bottom, I managed to get um, a role for as a freelancer for this web development firm who just had too much work going on at the time for Royal Mail and Speedo, the company that do the swimwear and um, a company called School Trends. And I really got stuck into that. But it wasn't long before that imposter syndrome set in. I used to call it developer doubt. So I would go to Drupal Sprints and I would look for advice and I would talk to my colleagues, but I always felt that um, the coding was really difficult. And for some reason, I didn't I didn't seem to get it. And so naturally, I would start to work more with the stakeholders and I would go out and observe their processes and do process flow diagrams. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was actually being a business analyst. But later on, when I did realize that I decided I was going to retrain as a business analyst. So I did my business analysis in practice qualifications and I did my Prince 2 because I thought it went really well with project management. I did all that research on what jobs are being advertised and, and I started to pursue that path. Now, what's really interesting is my recent work coaching people, I've been looking at how do we go through this period of feeling frustrated that we don't know the answers, uh, feeling that that doubt, and then come out the other side and figure things out. And I've come across a piece of work by Anders Ericsson, and it's about this perceived ability. So he talks a lot about deliberate practice. And this is where you start to do something new, you have your perceived ability of, of what you can do. And you then get really frustrated because, you know, you realize that it, this is really challenging. And at some point, some of us will duck out then. And I realized I did that as a developer. I ducked out and and didn't carry on, push through that discomfort. But with a business analyst role, for some reason, I went through that pain threshold. And the next step is where you apply creative thinking. You know, when you really want to do something, you really want to figure it out, you just do. And then after then, you go through this period of rapid progress where you've pushed through this comfort, you've applied creative thinking, and then you really start to excel in your field. And by knowing that dynamic, that that then changes your perceived ability of what you can do. So it's interesting, and you can probably look back on your career and think of elements that you gave up perhaps too easily or in other places where you really excelled because you pushed through that discomfort. And that's what I did to become a, a project manager and a business analyst. 
And then because I love data and I love systems and I love areas that are really growing and innovative, that's really what really drew me to working in technology. I naturally lent my ear to data and data analysis and machine learning was being talked about a lot more and big data. So that's when I did my master's in business intelligence systems and data mining. And that's led me to become a head of business intelligence where I work for yourself, Dave. So that's really been my my career journey into technology. You've you've gone on to now to create the Empowered Leaders in Tech. So tell me a little bit more about the vision for this new venture. Absolutely. So this is sort of a collection of my entire career's learning and teaching, if you like, where I've realized over the years that I've made some mistakes and that we we follow this career ladder and we follow what we perceive to be this idea of success. But that the reality is there's a lot more to it. And I believe that everyone should wake up feeling incredibly motivated and come home feeling fulfilled, knowing that they've done a really satisfying job, that they've done something that they feel is purposeful and that they're connected to. And that's the vision behind Elite. It's about providing people access to the personal development I've managed to tap into, the professional development that I've managed to do over the years, and that support mechanism so that people can figure out what it is that they want to do, what their vision is, um, what they would like to contribute, how they connect to it, what their values are, and also to have an an impact in the work that we do. Because I believe that all of us have this potential inside us. And sometimes when you suppress it, you can feel unfulfilled. You feel stuck. You feel that you're not really doing anything purposeful with your life. And that's when we become disengaged. Statistics show that seven in 10 people are disengaged at work. And Considering the amount of time we spend in work and the value and the great contribution that we can all make, how much further we can progress, I think it's incredibly important to be connected with it. And that's why I started Empowered Leaders in Tech. It's about leadership and career coaching and high performance coaching and support to help people on their journey. Now it's it, that's um, something that I spoke with John Sullivan about a couple of weeks ago in the podcast. Yeah, he said to me, you know, one of the things you've got to do is you, you've really got to love what you do as a job, and if you can go to work every day doing something that you you love doing, you know, you'll never do a day's work in the rest of your life. So that's a really great way of looking at things. So I absolutely agree with what you say there. But you've also gone on to as, as part of empowered leaders in tech is to create a podcast, which is really successful. So what was the the mindset and the approach that you took to launch that? Yes, you probably, you probably know this firsthand, Dave. It's very interesting how you can go from doing a safe job where you know the deliverable, it's clear and you you figure things out, to doing something on your own, your own personal project, and realizing that when you come to press record or when you come to announce that you're doing this thing, that people are watching you and you're playing smaller than you normally are. And you have this big vision. You're looking, you know, years ahead of yourself thinking, this is how I want this to be received. This is how I want this to help and serve people on their journey. And then you realize that when you first start out, you're you're playing small, you're you're showing up as a smaller self and, and that can take a lot of courage. And I think this stops people from doing it. So the first thing I think that it really taught me is that I thought I had a lot of confidence I thought I had a lot of courage, but really this pushed me to a whole nother level of showing up differently in my audience and and, and trying to overcome that fear of judgment. What will people think of me? What will people think of the podcast? What will people think of whether I should do this or or the content or or the other guests? And and once you push through that and you realize you've got to have your vision. So, you know, I I really had to focus on why did I want to do this? And when I kept coming back to I'm doing this for the people who are in a position that I was in years ago, the people that really are aspirational but don't know how to get past the overwhelm and the discomfort, the people who have got a lot of potential inside them, but they've managed to get a promotion, but they're still doing the day job and never getting to that strategic thinking that they want to because they're too busy overburdened with being unable to get out of the weeds. So, I think the first thing is really I had to get to grips with why and get my confidence in order. And then the second thing I would say is is listing the five steps that it takes to do anything. If you could break everything down into just five steps to do it, 
if you want to write a book, if you want to deliver a conference, what are the five steps in order to do that? If you want to do a TEDx talk, if you want to take your department and do something really innovative, what are the five steps in that process? And when you can break it down like that, and just focus on the first one, then you'll really start to get momentum because you you started to take those steps. And then the other thing I think was quite interesting is how other people had a perception of what you should be doing and how it's really easy to lose sight of your vision, what it is you're trying to serve, what it is you're trying to provide for people when you've got what other people want to do. And, and then putting that opinion on you and then having to sort of keep reflecting against what your vision is, is, is quite important. And then the fourth and, and final thing I probably learned from that experience was that consistency really pays off. You know, you've got to be in anything for the long term. You know, in your career, you accept the fact that I'm going to be on this career journey for many years and I'm not going to get to the next step immediately in the next six months, in the next three months. And that can that can be frustrating. But having that long term vision, having your skin in the game for the long term means you're always thinking about what's the best thing you can do and not what's the quick fix or how can I just get something out there? Because it's got to be about helping people and adding value. You know, this is precious people's time that they're going to be listening to this podcast. So I always think, is this really valuable? Does this help somebody with a problem they've got or a practical solution or inspire them by somebody's story and and, and all that kind of thing? And I bet you think that about every episode that you do. Well, actually, as you well know, the you know, Empowered Leaders in Tech was really the inspiration for me to start this podcast. You know, I, I saw the uh, the podcast that you done. I, I was a guest on it, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, and wanted to do something similar, but uh, around leaders in tech. So, you know, thank you for inspiring me, and I uh, I know I, I've actually helped to inspire others to start their podcast series as well. So, uh, the, you know, hey. huge, huge <laughs> knock on effect um, that you, you've created there, Sue. So, well done. But in your podcasts, you know, I know you talk about visibility and personal branding and how important those are. So can you give some advice and guidance to our listeners about the importance of that? Absolutely. And this comes to me a lot, actually. The, the problem is people who are aspirational, aspirational professionals, not knowing, saying it's unclear, how do I get recognized? How do I get that promotion? How do I get those big projects? I don't get noticed. But also people who are leaders saying, nobody knows what my team does. We don't, we don't get valued. We don't get recognition in this business. We, we just keep getting costs being cut. So visibility and personal branding is incredibly important to not only your opportunities, but also the, you know, the recognition and the impact that you can have and also the protection of your team and your infrastructure and what you do. Because without anybody recognizing the value you add, you're in a, in a very vulnerable position. So it is incredibly important. And for those of you who are thinking, I don't understand why nobody is recognizing the work we're doing or why I don't get this promotion, the chances are you need to work on your personal branding and your, your profile across the business. And it doesn't have to be standing up and delivering a presentation every time. It doesn't have to be standing in the office and shouting about all your achievements in that sort of way that we don't like to do. It's it's just about building that reputation so that you can build in the same way that brands do. You build no like and trust. So do people know what you do? And if they don't, perhaps it's educating them with something as simple as a company update or a regular newsletter or an intranet site. Any of these things can build up your visibility about what it is that you do. Showcasing some of the best work. Simple examples that some of my team members have done is they've delivered training sessions, Tableau training sessions over Microsoft Teams. So it's really easy to do. And we have 30, 40 Tableau users across the business that you can deliver these sessions to. And that boosts your no like, and trust, your personal brand. You become the expert in that field because people start to see you being more visible. So you want people to know who you are and what you do. So you need to get really clear on your identity right at the core of that. And you want to be able to develop an element of influencing skills with that. And the only way you can do that is when people know you as the expert for something, be congruent to that. So if they've been asked you to deliver a project about something, 
then make sure you're aligning to that and you're delivering that project or you're communicating the reasons why you need support from other areas to do that. Build up online and offline because even your work colleagues will see the work that you're doing over on LinkedIn, the the great articles that you post, the things that you share, and you'll start to be recognized as that sort of expert. And when they do recognize you as that expert, there'll be somebody sat around a table one day saying, we need to have Dave on this project because he knows about this sort of thing. Or let's have some input from Sue because she knows about, about this area. And when you've got those allies speaking about you because they're using your name, they're using your department's name, they recognize the value that you add, that's when you can really start to drive some ideas, some innovation, some 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 contribution there that will help you to feel more connected and purposeful in what you're contributing. It's about moving up the value chain, isn't it? Mm. It's, uh, so you, you, you've got to get the fundamentals right. You've got to get the basics in place. But then as you move and improve the, the, the value that technology brings to an organization, that is where you start to differentiate yourself, I think. Absolutely. I love that, actually, moving up the value chain. Yeah, that's a really good phrase. <laughs> so uh, I also know that you're, you're a really strong believer in the 3D growth framework. So can you tell me more about this framework and the impact that it can have? Absolutely. So one of the things that struck me for many years is that people stay stuck in their careers uh, while other people advance. And it can feel like you're doing all of the right things. You know, you're focusing on your hard skills. You're perhaps doing, ticking all the boxes, you know, your Prince 2 qualification, your master's, whatever it is that you feel like are the hard skills you need to achieve. You attended the leadership program, perhaps. But then there are other elements to, to a person, a, a, an infrastructure, if you like, the, the framework in the background that helped to uplift that person to up uh, to the next level. And I think it's when you can build that foundation, that's when you really start to see people excel and become more connected and get the opportunities and do all this great work, as you say, moving up the value chain. So the the three elements, it's a Venn diagram, and there are three circles in the Venn diagram, if you can imagine. The first one is all about mindset. So are you a positive person who comes with a solutions orientated and a goals orientated approach as opposed to somebody who brings problems to the table but never helps to find the solutions? Are you somebody who's got that growth mindset? So earlier on, I talked about moving through this this discomfort, this frustration by applying some creative thinking and then progressing and then adjusting your perceived ability. So this is thinking instead of I can't do something, I never will be able to do something. This is thinking we can do this. We need to learn. What's the next step? I can't do this yet, but I will do. It's flipping that mindset to say it doesn't matter. None of us know anything in this game because it's technology and, and it's changing so rapidly. I was only reading this morning about some new initiatives in data. And, you know, the, the fact is this the pace of this sector is so fast. You have to accept an element of growth mindset. And then the abundant mindset recognizing that scarcity doesn't serve you. If you're in competition with your colleagues all the time, that's not going to help you. Abundant mindset is where we lift each other up. We believe there's plenty of roles for everybody to come in and shine. There's plenty of opportunity for everybody to deliver their best. And we need to give everybody that level playing field to do that. Lift each other up and, you know, together we will do so much more. And then the other two circles. So the next circle on the Venn diagram is your support. So what I noticed when I worked with some executives is that they had these executive coaches. That meant they had a safe place to go and explore ideas. Now, I found when you moved into leadership, you lost a lot of your peers because they no longer understood the types of situations you were going through. You didn't have the same peer group that you had. As a project manager, you're probably surrounded by 10 other project managers in your team. When you move into leadership, you have less and less. So it's really important to try and find your peers, to try and find mentors and coaches and other people and places that can really support you. And that, you know, this is where Elite really came from, the idea of somewhere that you can go, that you can connect with peers and also connect with a coach and have that support. So that's the other element that's really important. And I noticed when people had this, they were able to handle so much more. They were more resilient. They were able to go and explore these ideas in safe environments and come back and then do these amazing things. 
where I was very much, I need to be a lone ranger. I've got to figure this out on my own. Asking was a sign of weakness. And when you realize it's not, then it's a real game changer. And then the last circle on the Venn diagram is about clarity and direction. A large part of our career is spent bumbling around from one job to the other and kind of following the path that feels like we should be doing because it's the safe option. Perhaps we're breadwinners or we have responsibilities at home. But very rarely do we look at our goals and we look at our values and think, what kind of life do I want to build? What kind of person do I want to be? What things am I passionate about? And I'm thinking of Danny's podcast now about the environment and social impact of things. Mm. And, you know, that jumped out at, at me just like it did with so many other people about, you know, a really good social cause, but also something that's going to align with a lot of people's values. And if you can incorporate that in your work, then that's even better. Um, when you know your strengths, your values, you can push forward much more strongly. So having that mindset that I can learn, I'm confident, I know my strengths, having that support network around you and having clarity about what you want to do will really help you to progress and figure out what is it I've got to learn now. So do you need to learn how to motivate your team? Do you need to learn how to work better with your team? Do you need to learn how to influence those stakeholders? And when we're in that position where we feel like we've got this foundation, this framework around us, we're more likely to learn, grow, and what I call up-leveling. Fantastic. That's really good advice. I'm going to definitely take a look, a closer look at the 3D growth framework and, and try and apply it to everything I do as well. So I suppose what are the next steps for the empowered leaders in tech? A couple of really exciting initiatives, actually. So I've been writing the Empowered Leader Programme, which is my big, very intense programme for people who are in leadership or just about to transition into leadership or getting prepared for that next step. So this is about people getting clarity on their identity as a leader, getting focused and productive. So instead of getting into that leadership role and continuing to be a doer, I talk to people all day long who are still doing the day job when they need to get to that strategy. They've got ideas, they just can't get to it. It's getting that focus and productivity. It's developing influence over your senior stakeholders as well as over your team so they come with you on that journey and also motivation and momentum and not to mention all that important personal personal branding and visibility. So that's my my big program is the Empowered Leader Program. But alongside that, the biggest vision I had for Elite and still have is we're now taking on founding members for the Elite membership. So this is transformational personal and professional growth that it will be delivered every single month. So I, I stand by this. One of the things you need as well as your support mechanism. So this is providing some peer support and some coaching support is a safe place for you to come and share your ideas, to do your goal setting, to do your planning, to keep you focused on what it is you should be doing, but also to have these mastermind sessions delivered of personal growth. So covering the topics that we all know we need to work on, things like your confidence and courage, how to get that executive presence, how to build your influence, how to stay motivated, how to build your resilience, how to build better connections with our team, with our families at home, how to show up more authentic and and build that personal brand. So a session every single month that people can drop into and a place that they can come to for support is the elite membership. And, you know, this is my, my vision for it was always to have this place where I needed this place to come and be inspired, be empowered, this safe place to come and check in. But that isn't isn't going to cost me thousands and thousands of pounds, but also is accessible and understand that I have commitments um, and I might need to talk about the fact that sometimes it's challenging having a family, wanting to, you know, part of your values being that you want this family, but you also want this career, amazing career, because you know you've got this potential inside you. And that's really what I wanted to do here is support people with achieving their goals that they want to, their career goals but also in balance with everything else that they've got going. You know, we're kind of in this new work phase, aren't we, where life and work are very blended, if not forced over the last 12 months, and it's making that work for you so you can feel fulfilled with all of it. Well, that is absolutely brilliant. So fantastic. I I look forward to hearing more about that. So, But but before I, I let you go, there's always the question I'd like to ask people, which is, what was that best bit of advice that you received during your career ascent? And what advice would you give to others who are starting out a career in technology now? 
Oh, I, I really struggle with this one because I probably have a list a mile long, hence, <laughs> hence, hence starting Empowered Leaders in Tech. Um, so the, the big thing for me was starting with why. Um, one of my directors talked to me about Simon Sinek, and I think that really opened my eyes to, I'd been stuck with viewing, like many of us, what am I going to do? What's my job title? What job do I want versus why do I want to do this? What does it bring out in me? What is my purpose and my passion? And what, what meaning does it have? And, and you you talked about this earlier with your other podcast guest who, who talked about knowing your, your purpose and not and loving your job so much that it doesn't feel like a job because it's something you want to do. So start with why and Simon Sinek, I'm a big fan of and I and I think you know, his 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 advice really res- resonated with me. Um, and then you asked me another question, didn't you? So my advice, um, my advice is really simple in theory, but it's very, it can be a challenge put into practice. And this is, I think if we all show up intentionally every single day about being curious and asking the questions then I think you will advance a lot more in your career than showing up, expecting to know all the answers, just get on with the job, produce an output, and then go home. If you can really show up intentionally, so you're listening to everybody around you, you're asking questions, even if it's not something that's being asked specifically of you, we do a lot of this where we're on a meeting and there may only be two people that are going to come away with the actions, but the reality is, We all need to understand why we're here. We're all here to add a value. We're all here to listen and learn. We're all here so that we can advance something. And you've been invited to that meeting or to that day to show up intentionally so that you can be curious and you can learn. And then when you have a suggestion, something to contribute, then you'll be in the right place to do that and you'll be in the right mindset. And I think that's one of the things I've made sure to do in my career is to show up every day very intentionally, very determined to learn. And if I do know anything, if I can share or introduce people, then I will do that. And I think that's, you know, credit to that is, is a lot of why I've progressed so far and, and and my mindset today. So hopefully that will really help your listeners to think about how they're showing up today and how what impact they're having. Absolutely. Well, fantastic advice, great career insights and brilliant thought leadership. So, so it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today and just wanted to thank you once again for being part of the Inspiring Tech Leaders podcast. And thank you for inviting me and definitely keep it up. These are really inspiring stories I've listened to. They're fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and stay tuned for more Inspiring Tech Leaders.